Hey friends, welcome back to my channel, or if you are new, welcome. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Kay, I'm a professional home organizer, and this is my channel where I talk about home organizing and uh, some other stuff and singing stuff too, I'm a singer too. <laughs> so for the first video in 2022, I wanted to share with you our entryway in our home and how it's been transformed from something I was sort of eh, about to a space I really love. We did both the decoration and the organization to the space, and you'll find uh, that a couple of the choices I made were going to be controversial, but I think I, I am really happy with the way that it turned out. So whatever size your entryway is, I know if you've been watching my channel for a little bit, you know that my first apartment where I was filming in, we had the smallest entry you've ever seen. Like basically you walked into the apartment and you were into the kitchen and you had to quickly figure out what to do with your shoes and your bags and stuff. In this house, we have a lot more room and it's been a, a joy to transform this space. So I hope you enjoyed the video let me know what you think of the results and uh the, the beginning of the video i'll show you a little bit of footage from the initial uh house tour when i first came to the space you can see what it looked like when i had done nothing to it and then i'll show you some footage of after we've been living there for a while and the transformation okay enjoy so here is the entryway to the house before we had actually moved in and it was very blue. This is actually a very beautiful color blue. It is from a company called Claire Paint. We actually really like this paint. It's called Frozen, in case you are wondering and want to buy this paint for yourself. However, it wasn't something that I liked in this space. I wasn't quite sure why the inside of the wainscoting wasn't the same color as the trim. And I was considering at that point wallpapering, but that is where the stairs are that go up to the other unit upstairs. So I wasn't really sure whether or not I wanted to tackle that or not. There were also these really interesting shoe racks from Ikea. They were sort of hooks and racks. And I decided that I really wasn't into them, but the sellers also had left some hooks, which I did keep a few of these, but I got rid of most of the hooks and replaced them with ones that I really liked. But uh, they did have a few cute hooks. I did keep those cuties right there. They also had an alpha unit there, which they put shoes on, which I wasn't really that keen on, but uh, I wanted to keep my options open. Again, this room is very blue, <laughs> very blue. There is an incredible closet in this space for coats and shoes and hats and other entry closet things. The alpha closet that is already in this space was a strange configuration for a reach-in closet. So a reach-in closet is a closet where you can reach in and grab things and a walk-in closet is actually one you can walk in. This closet's a little strange, it's sort of a step-in size and there was solution on three walls instead of just one, which seems like it's going to maximize storage, but when I was designing closets, I assured customers that this was going to be problem problematic. So I decided to live with it for a while just to confirm my suspicions and it indeed was super problematic. So you'll see that I go ahead and change this in a, in a future video. So here is the space after we had been living in it for a few months. You can see we had placed our console table there and we had also uh, hung, our, uh, hung our coats up there. I hadn't hung a mirror yet, uh, but I had placed my papa's grass there and there was a place for shopping bags. Clover always wants to be in the video, say hello to him. We were definitely appreciative of the hooks and the hook locations and I had placed a plate for my keys and my glasses and on the other side there were more hooks for more weather <laughs> gear and I decided that this little indent right here in the entryway was where I wanted to actually place a bench but I had to find one that was going to fit there. And if you've been watching my channel for a long time, you remember that this Ikea rug was actually in our walk-in closet in our first apartment together. So we've had it for a long time. I think it was like 15 bucks at Ikea. It's had a long life. I'm going to give it a different job uh, because I feel like it darkens the space a little bit. It kind of bombs out the space. So let us, oh, also I've got to show you my drawer, my entryway drawer. Look at this. These are cloth masks, which I actually had stopped using because situations. I switched over to, to N95s and K95s, so uh, yeah, I needed a place for those, so I needed to get to work. So I had rearranged that front hall closet 
uh, with a little bit of alpha that I actually had that we brought over from our previous two apartments. And the solution on three walls in, in theory is a good idea, but in practicality, it does not work. It's too squishy in there to have solution on three walls. That means I had shelving coming off each of the side walls and also on the back wall. It just didn't work. So what I did is went ahead and put solution just on one wall, just like a normal walk-in closet, and it worked so much better. I love this closet now. It's so much more functional, so much more beautiful, and nothing is inaccessible. I actually had some problems accessing items when there was shelving on two of the sidewalls. It just was very problematic. So I assure you, if it is not a walk-in closet, if it is a reach-in, it's very tempting to put that shelving on those side walls. So here is the view of the, the shelving on the side walls again. As you can see, there's only one, like a two sections on the front wall. All of your shelving should be on that, I'm sorry, that back wall where those shoe shelves are. That's where all of your shelving should be mounted. This side wall business is not practical <laughs> for every space uh, because you can see the shelving in on the back wall is actually covering access to the, the stuff on the, the inner corners. So here is the finished product. As you can see, nothing is out of reach. I can reach in through the front and reach everything in the closet and I love it so much. It's so beautiful. This is where I decided to keep that beautiful blue color so at least I could still look at it. It looks so good. And yes, there's a dedicated space for boots. And plus I have drawers for extra bags, extra masks, and extra hats. Now it was time for me to tackle the entryway, the wallpaper, and sort of cleaning up the construction that had been done here. So there was this alpha top track and standards that have been there. I think there was a shoe rack hung there before that held sh shoes, I guess, <laughs> I guess, but I didn't like it. I wanted to put a bench there. So my handy dandy uh, drill and I were there to save the day. If you're ever wondering what happens when you take down alpha top tracks, it's not as dramatic as you think. You just unscrew the thing, take it off the wall, fill in the holes and you are good to go. You do want to make sure you remove the anchors from the holes in the walls, just so that when you patch and paint, you're not gonna have that anchor sticking out at you. So my strategy for doing this has been to grab it and sort of push it inside of the wall so that it falls between the drywall and I guess the rest of the house. I don't know. That way, when you fill in the holes, you have a nice smooth surface. this beautiful bench at home goods and it fits right in this corner it's so gorgeous it kind of goes with the wood of our entryway table and it's even got a place to put our shoes so we are the only two people that live here so we just put our shoes there and we're and we're good so for the wallpaper i searched high and low for a white based very busy pattern and I came up with this one. It's called Woodland Fantasy and it's from a company called Temp Paper. They make the most beautiful wallpaper, but if you leave your wallpaper alone for a little bit, you might get a bean on top of it. <laughs> anyway, I have this squeegee from when we had glass shower doors. I kept it around because it's really good for installing wallpaper because sometimes if you install that, well, if you install this temporary peel and stick wallpaper, you're gonna end up with some bubbles in it and it's great for squeezing all the bubbles out and not tearing the paper and not having to use, you know, the expensive temp paper scraper that they sell with this thing. You can just use the squeegee. Anyway, if you've ever installed temporary, well, not, te well, peel and stick wallpaper, it's not temporary, it's permanent, but if you've ever installed peel and stick wallpaper you know frustration my I, my advice to you is to start in the center of the wall and make sure you draw a line with a level that way uh you're going to have inconsistency with leveling i think no matter how hard you try even if it's like the smallest inconsistency but if you start in the middle you can 
spread your inconsistency out over the length of the wall instead of having it start at the end and then it just gets it's super crooked by the time you get to the, the other side. I Just trust me, start in the middle, make sure you have a level line and then go from there. It is such, it takes a lot of practice to install this peel and stick wallpaper, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. And truth be told, you probably are going to have some tiny bubbles in the wallpaper. You're just gonna have to live with it or poke them with a needle um, or try to get them all out as best you can. I'm going to experiment with some heat. As you can see, I started to be to, to not have a level line here um, with the wallpaper. It, it, I actually did solve this over time. The reason I, cho I chose a super busy pattern is I can actually Frankenstein this wallpaper and you have no idea. It looks so good. Even if you just use patchwork pieces in little tiny areas, it's so busy. Your eye does not notice if the pattern doesn't match up. So definitely my advice, if you are looking to do this for the first time, choose a really busy, just wild pattern. That way you won't have to match up the, the pattern perfectly over the length of the wall. When you get to the molding, all you have to do is uh, cut it with an X-Acto knife and you are good to go. I think this entire space took me an estimated, I'm going to say over a period of five days, I probably spent a good 10 hours wallpapering the entire space. Um, that's over time, so I did not do this all at once. I, it did take me four straight days of just doing little areas and, you know, calling it a day from there. So just know that this takes time. The next thing I did was buy a mirror, finally. I bought this awesome mirror from Target. It was only like 70 bucks. I know mirrors can be super expensive, but this was a super nice mirror for not, you know, a million dollars. So here was that shoe rack that was up earlier. I decided I needed to take the, the, the pieces of wood down that they were, they were mounted on. Um, the one on the right, I unscrewed it. It was definitely stuck to the wainscoting and the wall and I, just no matter how hard, how hard I tried, I couldn't get it off. So I decided I would just leave it there, paint it, and we would get it another time uh, when the contractors came <laughs> to the house. So one of the last steps in this major transformation is painting the wainscoting, the inside of the wainscoting. I didn't understand why it was blue. So luckily we did have some of the paint. This is also from Claire Paint. It's called Timeless. It's a beautiful off-white and we uh, work together as a team. Uh, I cut in and my husband been, uh, went in with the roller and it did take us three coats to pretty much get this nice and opaque enough for our our taste we probably could have gone with one more coat but we actually did run out of paint so we're probably gonna buy another uh can of timeless when we have uh, when we have time but um we didn't have any primer so we just had to do more coats but it did turn out to be really nice and the one thing i've learned is that Painting's a lot of work. I I had no idea, I'd never painted a wall in my life. You can see it's still blue there. We did go in and, and do an extra coat and for some reason, I there was a some blue paint left over from the previous owners on the light switch here in the entryway. I was like, how? How did that go unnoticed for so long? So I really, I just grabbed some acetone and took it off. That's just, I, I just thought I would document it because it was so weird that 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 had been there for years and no one had noticed. So here's the final result after three coats of paint and we were quite tired. We actually had pizza that night. <laughs> so I did replace these sort of shaker looking hooks. I'm not sure if that's the right term with these Umbra flip hooks, which I always wanted. I love them so much. They're so cool. <laughs> anyway, my final task was to tackle my entryway console drawer. Mine is on the right. My husband's is on the left. His is much more organized, but mine was just full of things I wasn't using anymore. And whenever I opened the drawer, I got really sad. So I got these super cool drawer organizers from the container store. These are the Marie Kondo drawer organizers, and they are super fun to use. Some of them, they have bottoms and tops and they're really interesting. And as you can see here, I'm doing a lot of trial and error. So don't feel like you have to get it right the first time. Just like experiment, see what fits. And I found the perfect size for my 
for my K95s or K94s that I've been using, they fit right in the front. So it's so much more organized now. Look at that. We love to see it. Hanging the mirror was my final task in this project. And let me tell you, this mirror came really nicely packaged, but it was bolted or screwed to the box. They wanted me to undo it with the tool that I received with it. And I said, no, I have a drill right here. We're just gonna unscrew it with this drill. Why is it screwed to the box? Oh, that's, that was just, that was just so much work. Anyway, I did like though, that it came with this nice handy dandy template to where I could put the holes. I loved that. I was just messing around to see if I was going to drill into a stud or not. It happened to that one hole went into a stud and the other I had to use an anchor. I didn't use the anchor that they gave me because it was one of those white ones that you screw in with your hand or a screwdriver and I, I don't like those, so I, I grabbed one of my old reliables and used that instead. And the mirror is so pretty. I wanted to bring back the tray that I was using before, but I wanted to bring back one of the dividers that actually came with the tray that was in another room. And I found this bowl that I had for a long time. I got it from Economy Hardware on Mass Ave in Boston. Economy Hardware is one of those hardware stores where college students get all their stuff. And it just brought back memories and I wanted to use it to put my keys in. So I had a place to drop them. And of course, the pompous grass. Normally I like to put fresh flowers in this, on this entryway table, but I didn't have any fresh flowers. So when I don't, I always use the pompous grass because it never dies and I used that tray that I took out of my drawer to drop mail in because my husband works California hours and can't always open his mail when it comes and here is my outbox baskets my outbox is a place where I place things that need to leave the house it's an outbox so in that case there was an envelope that I needed to take to the post office it went right in the outbox and of course I did the honors of hanging all my things back up on the new hooks. I love these flip hooks, they are so beautiful. And last but not least was the replacing of this old Ikea rug with a brand new, brighter, washable rug also from Target. This rug is a lighter color, which means it's going to gunk up with mud and dirt and stuff. But when it does, all I have to do is throw it in the washing machine and it gets all nice and clean. So it lightened up the space a lot more than the old rug it was light and bright and it's a nice little cute print and i i love it here is the finished entryway i am so delighted with the way that it turned out i love the wallpaper i love the rug i love the wainscoting the off-white color instead of the blue color and I love this little corner with the hooks and the entryway table and the natural wood tones and oh my gosh the flip hooks are so cool you got you gotta admit the flip hooks are super cool and my drawer is nice and organized and has the masks that I'm using nowadays and also my box opener and my doggy wet ones and my hands wet ones and also the pompous grass the top of the entryway table is minimal and only has the stuff on it that we're using or it's a temporary space otherwise it's kept nice and clear and clutter free it's so nice and i love that i can check myself out before i leave now with that beautiful new mirror from target on the other side we've got hooks for more coats and we finally got this bench so that we can sit and put on our shoes and actually store them underneath the bench it's very very cool and the shoes that we're not actually wearing we put inside the closet and the coats that we're not using, we put inside the closet. Everything has a place, even the wet boots have a place. We have a boot mat inside of our closet so that if we have any really, really wet shoes, they got a place to go. Living in a place where there's a lot of weather, we have a lot of cold winters, a lot of rainy falls and springs. We need a lot of weather gear. So I love the way that this space turned out. Here's a reminder of what it looked like before, before we got started. And now here's what it looks like now. I love how white and light and bright and welcoming it is. I hope you enjoyed this entryway transformation and inspired you to neaten up and tidy up your entry as well. Thanks for watching.